Hey, what's up guys? I hope you're doing great. I got the ramp, I got the hydroplaning wheels, and we are going to the same place as last time, doing some jumps, doing uh, some driving on water, and just having a good time. Let's do it. Here we are, most, well, absolutely best place for hydroplaning the car. Just, just look at the transition between water and sand. It's unbelievable, and the water is completely flat. It's just absolutely perfect. Are we recording? Yes, we are. Okay, let's uh, let's cover a few details before we uh, before we go absolute mayhem on the ramp. So, to make a short story short. I threw the printed RC car tires that can drive on water. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you watch it up here. So this outer part is made out of a flexible filament and the inner part, the orange part that I switched over from the black PLA before, I basically just beefed it up. It was a little bit too weak and it tended to, to break inside the PLA structure. So I beefed them up and hopefully will hold a lot better this time. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I 3D printed uh, some tires that can make the car drive on water. But what I didn't test was how does it perform on sand because I, I, I know that my previous, previous RC car tires uh, that was out of a hard semi-flex filament, uh, you know, the ones that failed, they drove extremely well on sand. The, the grip was just unbelievable. The traction was just yes, insane. So what I want to see today is can we drive this on sand and how well does it pull? So the sand is a little bit harder than it used to, but then obviously we have the ramp and what I wanted to do with the ramp is see if we can uh, jump into the water. So uh, imagine we drive on sand and then we hit the jump, well basically jump into the water and will it have well power or, or buoyancy enough for it to continue driving on water even though we jumped into the water. So what I wanted to see today and I will be using a three cell battery because a four cell battery was just way too powerful, it just puts way too much stress on the uh, internal gears okay do we have steering we have steering so that's good <laughs> i know the previous wheels did so great on sand mostly because they had like sharp uh well it was semi-flex so it's not nearly as flexible as these tires but i'm telling you i think these tires could do even better so yeah i don't know let's uh let's see it It's just way colder than I expected. The, the sand, the porous sand that I was talking about, is just rock hard. It's, it's difficult to to even test the, the traction. So we'll definitely have to do a thorough test once the climate is getting warmer. I mean, it gives me great acceleration and and yeah, it really seems to work. I wouldn't necessarily say that it gives me better traction than the than the first version of my failed tires. 
So my conclusion is it's definitely working better than the stock wheels, but on ice I could see it was just impossible to even to even steer it and that's probably because it has no surface area once it hits like asphalt or ice it doesn't have any surface area to uh, to get any traction so it was it was merely impossible to drive on ice yeah maybe that could be the next video ice wheels i saw this comment i'll see if i can find it the person was wondering what happens if you simply just place the the car in the water will will the buoyancy from the tires be enough to make it stay afloat and I will be really surprised if it is because I hardly think the tires are waterproof and I can see air bubbles rising from, from the tires. So it means it's, it's not waterproof and it will just go straight to the bottom if I place it in the water. So no, it's not staying afloat on the water because of the tires and if I give it some throttle, it's not gonna pop up on the water just because of the buoyancy. So to answer your question, no, it's not driving on water because of the buoyancy, though I'm, I'm pretty confident that the buoyancy helps. But what's really interesting is that you can start from right off the edge of the water, just keep those RPMs way up there, and it will begin to drive on the water, which is really interesting. So it will be able to drive just from like this position. So if I give it some throttle now and continue, it will stay on the water. Okay, it didn't. Okay. So no, it's not driving water simply because it's staying afloat and the rotation of the tires uh, makes it move forward. It requires some starting momentum and, and speed in order to start driving on the water. I, I made it so you can adjust the angle of, uh, of the ramp by moving this uh, piece of wood uh, along the along the side of the frame here, and uh, I just mounted it to a, a cliff side basically, and uh, this is just a bridge out. And let's see if we let's see if we can uh, make the car jump, but not in, in a in an angle, and just jump straight out to the water and continue. And uh, yeah, that will be the first test. And uh, what is my prediction? I'll stay positive. I'll, I'll stay optimistic and say. It will, um, it will just drive off and continue and uh, sail away over to the other end of the of the lake. No, this is not salt water. It's the uh, it's uh, the biggest lake in Europe, I believe, called uh, Van Nen, here in Sweden. So it's it's not salt water. It's not gonna. Well, it's probably gonna make the car a little uh, rusty, but I'll take that chance. All right, let's do it. I'm gonna stand over here. So I'll make sure I hit the ramp. Here we go, ramp test number one, here we go. I feel like I was going too easy on the throttle. This car wanted to sail off in the sunset. I had to bail out. There is there is a limit how far I'm willing to go in two degree water. It hit the ramp, it hit the water and just continued like nothing. Maybe not as gracious as I'm telling it right now, but that was awesome.
blast today. It was so much fun, but I need some practice. I, you need to hit the ramp right on, very high speed. I only got to hit the ramp and then continue on the water a couple of times. It was really difficult, but the car held up great even though I did some nasty crashes. And uh, this is the JLB Shida. And uh, yes, I did have to waterproof the electronics, uh, even though it says it's waterproof, if you want to submerge it. But if you want the electronics to last a long time in the water, even though it says it's waterproof, you will have to put goop on it to protect it. Also, I never got the opportunity to do an outro uh, because my boots got stuck and my feet got really, really cold to the point where I couldn't walk anymore. And uh, you can actually uh, hear my desperation in the video. Yeah, not my finest moments. Yeah, so anyways, now you know that jumping a hydroplaning car on a ramp and then continue on water is possible and always to bring a spare set of shoes and socks. Okay, have a nice day. Bye.